Hi there folks, uh, here's the uh, Tessina sub-miniature camera which is uh, the uh, automatic 35 and it takes 35mm film Okay, um, it's, uh, it's a reflex uh, camera and you've got uh, a viewing lens there and the uh, taking lens there the lens is 25mm by 2.8 Okay text standard 35 millimeter film okay which is uh, cut in uh, two lengths uh, approximately 21 inches and 17 inches giving you approximately 24 frames or probably 16 frames um, here is the um, the viewfinder okay so it's got a sports viewfinder and also a ground grass glass uh, view Finder. If you look down through it, you can just see that, and um, with that, you can actually precise the focus if you're doing, say, portraits or something like that. Okay, so to close it, it's one, two, three, four, okay, like that. And to uh, set the exposure on this dial here, you've got two dots a dot this side, a dot that side and um, say if we just turn it to the to the white dot there we're on 5.6 okay and the distance scale is here which I've set at 10 feet so that um, that's that will give you a range of 7 feet to infinity so that's really good for street photography or if you're shooting buildings or things like that you know everything from 7 foot to infinity will be uh, in, in good focus okay um, there's a little chart on here telling you um, um, what what settings to use on um, if it's sunny, cloudy, or dull. Okay, but there is um, actually um, a, a meter for the Tessina which just slides into here. Okay, um, if you're taking a photograph, then um, once you're happy with setting your f-stop and your distance, okay. You can actually frame it uh, through the uh, sport finder. Okay. And then when you're actually taking your photograph, you can set. Uh, I'll just show you that. You can set the, the speed here, which I've set at one two five. Okay. And it goes from really um, half a second to five hundred. And there's also a B setting on it as well. Okay. Um, here I've just wound it, so I won't wind it. But here, this is the um, clockwork. That you wind, okay. You wind it towards the arrow, okay, and that um, that's that that's for the um, the shutter release and also to rewind the film once the exposure has been taken, okay. So I'm going to just take a. I'm just going to waste a shot now, okay. Just so you can hear it. And um, when you're taking photographs, don't. Um, don't hold that or that because they, they both rotate okay so you've got to sort of hold it like that and then take your picture like that okay and your photographs taken um, there is um, th there is a, a plate here that you can get with a actual tripod mount on it so you can um, fit it on a mount here we've actually got the um, the wristband for it Okay, so it'll sort of sit like that really. Okay, on your wrist. Okay, like that. Which is very easy to fit. And it's also got a spring release here. So that's very easy to take off. Okay. Um, and that's that's the basics of it really. Um, you know, um, it's not very easily explained on the um, videos I've seen on YouTube. So I thought I'd, I'd just do one. Uh, a video so you can see also there's a, there's a setting here for M which is manual so if you're not using uh, flash or anything just leave it on the M okay um, to rewind it when you finish your film just pull that out pull that out like that and then just wind, rewind it in the direction of the rewind arrow until you hear the film come out and then you can stop push them both back in and then I won't do it because there's a film in it but um, if you just Pull that slide back down, click that off, the old back comes off, and then you can take your exposure set out and put the back back on. So, um, so that's that. So it's a really nice uh, Swiss engineering 
you know, um, some 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 sites say this is over 200 parts, other sites say this is 400 parts. So, um, but you can see if you handle one, it's really really exquisite the way it's been made. I mean, it's definitely Swiss clockwork and it's Swiss uh, precision. So, you know, if you're using one of these, you've got to be really gentle with it, okay? And don't, um, you know, you know, you can't sort of uh, treat it um, like a, you know, like a brick or a hammer, you know, you've got to be really gentle with it because it, it is actually very precise engineering that's made this. And the parts and the screws are so tiny. Uh, in actual fact, um, I've I've had this um, I've had this uh, viewfinder off myself because oh, I'll do this right. I'm gonna do it. Oh, come on. Thank you. Okay, because it's very easy. It just slides off. Okay. And I've had that um, that ground glass out, and I've cleaned all the insides. And it's amazing how brighter the screen is once you do that. But you've got to be very careful, okay, because you've got to undo those two tiny screws here and here um, to be able to do it. So, you know, you've got to be sort of um, very careful when you're doing that. But, uh, but, that, but that's basically the camera, and it's really uh, quite good. Um, there's three versions. There's the 35 and this is the automatic 35 and then there's the L okay and they say that the automatic and the L, the L type have a better lens but I'm not sure that is because on some some sites it tells you that the 35 has the better lens so it's very confusing on the information you receive okay but um, you've got to think if you are using this camera you know, you've got to be very clinical with uh, how you work it because everything has to be clean. You know, um, when you're processing the film and when you're taking the film out, everything has to be clean. You know, your hands have got to be really clean and dry unless you're using, um, you know, cotton um, processing gloves that you can buy um, because the slightest dust, you know, is going to get everywhere. So you've got to be really careful with that. And so once you slide that back, that's locked. And I'm hoping that's um, taken some of the um, confusion how to uh, operate this camera. But if you get a good one, you know, it's really good fun. And it's very easy. It's 35mm. You can either process it yourself or take it to, um, you know, a film processor and they'll process it. Okay. But you've got to remember that if you're having prints made, that um, because of uh, the twin reflex of this, it actually um, puts the, um, the the image on the wrong side of the film so that uh, when it actually goes to the lab instead of having the emulsion facing down on the enlarger it's got to be facing top okay so that's the only the difference with it this is the um, this is the film loader so it takes an ordinary 35mm um, cassette in there you've got your um, to see a plastic cassette that goes in there, okay, and you attach it um, to the roll here and onto there, and you slide it in. You close that down, and I'll just show you this. Is actually a cutter. You can see that. That's the cutter. So you know you have that up to start with, and then there's two there's two clicks here. So if you press that one down, so that's that, okay. That will give you 24 exposures, and if you press that right down on the other side, that will give you 14. So it tells you actually when you've actually reached the right stage, and then you can push it down and actually cut your film. Okay, it's not quite in right, so uh, just do this. So you, and that cuts your film. So okay, so that's that. That's the the secrets of that. Comes with a very nice case as well nice leather case okay and this is a bit damaged so it would fit on a belt originally so uh, I hope you like that uh, I've tried my best this is the first video I've done on this camera uh, so if you've got any questions you can uh, put a, a question through uh, YouTube okay and I'll be uh, quick to answer and thanks very much for your patience I hope you can see everything this is the first time I've done this on the tabletop with this 
for, for quite a while. And uh, what I've actually done is um, I've actually printed um, off the internet. If you go into um, uh, sub.com, subminiature.com, um, you can find that there is, um, you can actually print off the actual um, instruction book, how to operate the camera. And then what I did, uh, I just uh, emailed it to a printing house and they printed up this into this booklet so it's bigger. And it's easier to see, okay, and um, you can really understand it and study it and um, get the full benefit out of this camera. Um, okay, um, regarding quality of the lens, um, the Tessina lens... Uh, on the 35 and the automatic is a little soft but it still gives nice quality and it gives you those vintage kind of photographs so if that's what you're looking for then uh, this is ideal uh, some sites tells me that um, you know these images can be blown up large providing that everything's crystal you know that it's you know in sharp focus the negatives have been, uh, uh, been um, developed in the very best way, um, you know, using um, fine grain developers, uh, using this proper stock bath, uh, you know, proper fixing times, proper washing, okay. Um, so if you're really clinical and you get everything right, then you can come up with some really sharp images. But from what I've been told, it's not quite as good as, say, the the Minox with their lens, which is uh, 3.8, uh, 3 because that lens is really, really sharp. So it won't be quite as good as the Minox. But on the other side, you've got to consider it's a bigger negative side, because this is 14 by 21 mil negative against uh, a 9 mil by 11 on the Minox. So it's got a you know it's got a bigger area of focus on the negative so you know with proper processing you know you should be able to get images that, that you're going to be really proud of okay the other point to take note of if you're buying one of these cameras is that um, you need to when you do your test shots and your test films when you're processing them through and taking your, uh, your pictures take a note of the f-stops and the speeds that you're taking write it down because it's really important because once you've got your first film developed especially if you do your home developing like I do then you can you can you can assess the quality of um, the density of the actual negative so in other words that um, say if you're shooting at 5.6 and you find that um, you know your negs are a bit thin then obviously you can increase them a little bit on your um, on your ASA number so if you're shooting at 80 right because this is set at 80 there isn't a hundred so that and if you're using a hundred film then um, you know you can alter it slightly to get um, to get that or you can actually slightly alter the uh, the f-stop you know you can probably do that so it's all trial and error but once you come to a set position where you know how your camera's operating and how it's working then you will get uh, you'll get uh, fine uh, fine photographs so i hope you like that uh, and if i can help you at all just uh, send me an email thanks very much hope this video is okay it's the first one i've done for a long long time on a camera and thanks for watching